All right, I'm hoping to make this a short one because I've already done a video on Jonah. Uh, so you, you can always go look look at that if you want. And it was long-winded and it was pretty detailed and things like that. One of my favorite topics is Jonah. So when now that I see that people are talking about the sign of Jonah, it just makes me so excited. And everyone is kind of attributing the sign of Jonah in some ways to this eclipse because there's like a, a Jonah, Texas, and we, it goes over this fish island, and there are, there's two Ninevehs in the pathway here, and maybe like six other ones out of the path that are close-ish, maybe six others that are uh, town of Joppa or, you know, that kind of thing. But I want to talk about the sign of Jonah in another light, which uh, I think is, is uh, you know, a, a biblical light, which is also something that we should be interested in as we are, as we are looking for the end times, right? Or looking for the coming of, the end times sounds so dour, doesn't it? Uh, it it's supposed to be a new beginning, the, the greatest new beginning. So... One of the passages, though, that gets the most scoffed at, and I, I, I suppose understandably so, um, when, when people go and they, you know, it just really feels like one of those Bible passages that is just so much like mythology, like Noah's one where people think, yeah, right, two of every animal on this boat, and then uh, Jonah's this other one where, I've heard it, I've heard it a hundred times. The the question, yeah, you really believe that Jonah survived in a whale for three days and three nights praying? Um, and my my answer used to be, well, with God, anything is possible. And while that is true, and I still believe that, now if people ask me. You know, people haven't really asked me since left leaving my mission really much, but um, every once in a while you'll see it. If people were to ask me, you really think that Jonah was alive for three days in a whale? I would say no. I think he was as dead as a doornail. I, I'm quite certain that he was. Now, again, the story that we get as a, as children is that he was in there like with a little lamp and he was maybe sitting in a little on a little raft or something at you know praying in there but i i would suggest that he was absolutely dead now as a little context for people who who may need it uh Jonah is a short little short little story it is four chapters in the Bible, one of, you know, a very popular one. It is read every year on the Jewish holiday of Yom Kippur, which is the, the Day of Atonement. It is read out loud, so it's, a, it's an important one on this ultra-important day of theirs. And Jesus referenced it once and as, as a major sign, and we'll go into that. Uh, so Jonah, he got a mission call to Nineveh, which it, it would be like getting a mission call to the scariest city in the world today, uh, wherever you might consider that being. And so he figures, I'm, I'm getting out of here. I'm going to go to the coastal port Joppa and get on a ship and, and get out of here, which I assume maybe he was going to try to get to Iberia, you know, Spain, where it seems like maybe the Phoenicians were already doing some stuff out there. But uh, we're not exactly sure. I'm, I'm sure he was trying to get to Tarshish, right? Which could have been out there, but that's, that's, a, whole other, that's a whole other video that I don't want to go into. So going there, the storm starts. The, the people on the ship, these Phoenicians figure... Which God did we anger? Which one of you angered a God? And then, of course, uh, they see Jonah there, and uh, it's figured that, you know, he he angered the Hebrew God, which there's been rumors about what happens when you do that. And then they toss him over. He's in the, the whale, 
uh, the belly of the whale prays, gets spit out, gets raised up, goes to Nineveh, preaches unto them, thinking, you know, this is going to be a lost cause, and basically gets his lawn chair out, uh, sitting outside of the walls of Nineveh, and thinking, wow, this is going to be, this is going to be quite the show, fire and brimstone from heaven. And then, uh, it, like, he gets a little sunburn on his head, and the the city doesn't get destroyed, which is so interesting because in that case, it is a the sign of Jonah, or the story of Jonah ends with this interesting case of mercy being placed on the people there because they just don't know. And I think this maybe bugs Jonah. He would have loved to see some fireworks, I think, and I think... Of, of all the places that the ancient world would have thought deserves that sort of treatment, it would have been it would have been this ancient Assyrian city. Uh, but it doesn't get it, which is so, so interesting. So first I want to go through a couple terms that uh, we find before going into the actual sign. Uh, some of the terminology. So Job 7. Nine, we have this is here right, uh, right here. As the cloud is consumed and vanished away, so he that goeth down to the grave shall come up no more. Now I want to go to Bible Hub, which is an interesting site for. Uh, oh, lost my spot here. That's okay. Uh, it's an interesting spot for finding all of the translations in, in one in one location, but also it has the Hebrew uh, so we can we can find out exactly uh, what was said in the Hebrew. Not that I speak Hebrew, but you can see uh, how that you know you can see what the word was. Same with the, the Greek, and it's interesting. So, as a cloud vanishes and is gone, so he who goes down to Sheol, or Sheol, which is the underworld. Now, the underworld to the ancients, same as Hades, is this, this kind of, uh, I mean, you, you don't especially want to go there, but it's, it's, the place for, it's the place for the spirits to go after they die. And we have Sheol, we have Hades being said, and we have something called Gehenna. And they all kind of get wrapped into uh, one word in English, which is hell. And I think it does a disservice, and it also gets people maybe having a confused, uh, a misunderstanding of that, because they are not exactly the same thing. Now, members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints may, through going through just a couple of these verses, recognize Sheol as the spirit world. So going down into the spirit world, uh, much like Hades as a spirit world of sorts, uh, one that they would understand, and, and uh, eventually, you know, when we have the harrowing of hell, it is like the harrowing of Hades or the harrowing of Sheol, as opposed to the harrowing of Gehenna, which seems to be more like the damnation, eternal torment or purgatory or whatever you'd want to call that. Okay, so they are two different things. So that's that's one of them. Uh, let's go. Uh, actually, I can just do it from here instead of going to the other site. I believe it is in Job 33. Come on. Yeah. So you see, we he he keeps back his soul from the pit. He keeps back his soul from the pit. Uh, keepeth back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. And the pit is another word that is describing Sheol. Okay, or shale, or however you say it. Now let's go to uh, Psalms. And 
And uh, let's go to the next verse here. He lifted me up out of the slimy pit. Again, one more. And then just the last one that we will cross-reference here. Um, as far as an Old Testament verse is we will go to... Uh, another psalm okay and i think this one directly uses the word shale again and oh, my computer is being a little silly here i believe it's 48 yeah so the man what man is he that liveth and shall not see death shall he deliver his soul from the hand of the grave salah let's go to the hebrew what man can live and never see death, this mawet, can he deliver his soul from the power of Sheol? And then Salah is this, uh, uh, this note uh, meaning suspense or pause. Okay, so it's interesting how we have that as, uh, we have that as, as a term being used. So let's go actually to Jonah now. And since I, I kind of like using Bible, Bible Hub. Uh, let's make sure we find, I think it's Jonah 2.2. 2. Uh, actually, let's just go to this because it'll just be easier to see everything in front of us. Hope you stick with me. It is, it is an interesting topic. Um. But I didn't promise to be the most... Okay, here we go. Yeah, I was on the right spot. Okay, so then Jonah prayed unto the Lord, his God, out of the fish's belly, and said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. Where did he hear him from? Out of the belly of hell, cried I, and thou heardest my voice. So let's go back to Jonah 2. Go to the Hebrew saying, In my distress I called to the Lord, and he answered me, answered me from the belly of Sheol, this underworld. Now, if he is in this underworld, we can consider that maybe he is not having a great time, right? I mean, the same with if he's in the, the belly of a, a whale. I would, I would hate that. But if he's in this underworld thinking that he has died and he's probably going to get judged poorly for that, you know, you, maybe because he, he left his call or abandoned his call, he was killed and now he is going to have to face God and he's basically praying for another chance. And so he is spit up. Uh, what is it? Is it vomited up or spit up? Okay. Uh, right. And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah onto the dry land. And the Lord, uh, the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh and uh, that great city. So it's just really interesting. Now let's go to the point where. The Pharisees, and, and speaking of that arise, I think I already mentioned it now. It's the same sort of terminology that is used when Jesus raised Jairus' daughter from, from the dead. Like, arise, arise, come back to life. Uh, Got to go to the New Testament. 2.12. Okay, so... This is a part where, as mentioned, the Pharisees are seeking a sign from Jesus. And of all the things that he could maybe do at that moment, the thing that would be the boldest claim in his mind, it seems like, is he's going to give them this sign as unto the sign of Jonah. Now, we can... We can have a whole bunch of things that point towards that as interesting parallels. I know, again, people point to this. They point to a constellation of the whale that um, during this eclipse, it'll like point to a, you know, a star somehow in, in, the, in the belly of the whale, which is all interesting. But the sign of Jonah 
in my mind, as it is relating also to Jesus, is going to be Jesus going down into, into Sheol and then coming back and returning. So let's actually read what is said here. Then certain of the scribes of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous uh, sorry, I lost. An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall be no sign given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For the Jon for as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Again, the heart of the earth. Uh, people have a different understanding maybe of what that sort of means. We figure, well, he's going to be buried or like in, in his tomb, but the heart of the earth to the people hearing this would have probably been this, this underworld. Under the, under the temple, they had this little chamber thing. Anyway, that's going. And the men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with, its, with this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonas. And behold, a greater than Jonas is here. So even the men of Nineveh that have been dead and dead for ages shall rise in judgment with this generation. So everyone, like the ones then will rise, the ones at that generation sh shall rise. And it's just a, it's a very interesting thing. Now we can go a few different areas with this. Uh, the parallel between Jesus and Jonah, at least in my opinion, though, when we consider Jonah as being dead, is uh, ha have being dead is is much stronger. And because we know that Jesus was down for three days in this underworld of sorts, uh, he's saying that he would rise from the dead. And of course he would do that, but he wouldn't just do that. He would, he would unbind the chains that had shackled those already dead into this, this underworld. And so we know that as Jonah was raised up and, uh, spit out, I guess, uh, we also have Jesus being, you know, Jesus emerging from from the tomb. So also an interesting parallel here is that the Pharisees wouldn't see Jesus ri uh, risen back up, but it would be the disciples who would have that opportunity. And I also think um, if I was looking for a sign of Jonah today, I mean, the eclipse is interesting and things, but... If I was looking for a sign of Jonah, I would be looking more towards the sign of the of the two prophets in in Revelation that would go to Jerusalem and die and th after three days be risen up. It sure seems to me to be more uh, pointing towards rising back up from the dead. And on a a, a grander note. If we're looking at this verse here, at least in my mind, the men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with generation and, and shall condemn it. Uh, and given the sign of Jonah, I mean, there are a whole bunch of people who have died and gone into whatever this Sheol is. And uh, if, you know, as this could be something that would be a lot of people would read this and if they don't maybe have the right understanding, and again, I'm not an authority on this, but this, this is something that has fascinated me for a long time. People that go in that die. There are a lot of people who think that you are immediately judged, right? And they go to their, their final kind of judgment resting area or whatever. And if they find themselves in this shale and think this is not this is not what I expected it to be, this is actually quite awful. Um, this spirit prison portion of it could be an area that maybe they don't, you know, it's not 
uh, overly comfortable place to be and it doesn't feel like this big exaltation and and uh wonderful place now i don't know what it's going to be there uh but if people go to that place um the sign the sign of jonah if jonah too went there you would feel like people who know the sign of jonah who are going there know that one day they too will be risen up and so i feel like uh this a, a lot of what is going on here is speaking towards all of us being once again risen up um now if at the eclipse a whole bunch of people rise up from the dead that would freak me out and i don't think you know that's not what i'm expecting anything like that but um it's just interesting and that's what i feel is the sign of jonah now um, I mentioned before that it seems to be that a part of the sign was this mercy. And, you know, I think a lot of people are sitting back and kind of relishing in our own modern Babylon or our own modern Nineveh being burned up. And I remember what happened you know, remember what happened to Jonah? It didn't exactly happen that way, and he got a he got a sunburn, and it seemed like a little bit of a scathing uh, remark from the Lord for feeling that way. Now, it I don't know how our modern Babylon compares to Nineveh. Now, Nineveh they were doing some awful things, but one of the things that the Lord said is that they don't know better. And I can't help but feel that our modern Babylon largely does know better. And uh, it certainly doesn't feel like, uh, certainly doesn't seem, you know, we've seen the prophecies of what happens to modern Babylon. But again, I, I, I'm not sure how I'm, how I'm supposed to feel about that. Am I supposed to feel like Jonah? Or am I supposed to, you know, I, I don't want, I don't, I don't relish that. Now, as a tiny tangent, I think it would be worth doing a video about the crumbling of the 70 United Nations of Babylon that broke off from the Tower of Babel and the, the crumbling of that United Nations by, you know, the United Nations beast Chimera by the, the one Lamb of God. And uh, that kind of video would encompass Revelation to Genesis, or Genesis to Revelation. It would go into all sorts of like human-animal hybrids and things happening today and giants. And anyway, it might be interesting. So I'll, I'll maybe think about doing that. I, I hope you stuck with me. I kind of lost my train of thought a little bit at the end, but... Um, I wonder what you think about this sign of Jonah. And I know it's probably a number of things, but uh, I think specifically it is speaking about uh, rising from the dead as Jonah probably, in my opinion, rose from, was risen from, from the dead. So talk to you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.